Welcome back to DIY Willie. Today is a day that I've been looking forward to for a very long time, more than a year. Um, I've been collecting parts with this build uh, long before you and I started collecting parts for the uh, 224 build I did not too long ago. Um, why I've put this build off so long, I really don't know. I've wanted to do it, I guess because the engine that Mighty has, my uh, my Mega Moto, a mini bike with a custom swing arm. I call that bike Mighty if this is your first time you've seen my videos. Anyway, uh, I guess the reason I put this build off is because the engine that's in Mighty runs so good. You know, I built that engine uh, uh, about three years ago, maybe two years ago. And uh, man, it just doesn't fail. Now, uh, there's some things I wish I'd have done different and uh, some things I'm definitely gonna do different for this time, but uh, I, and I wish I had bought a different block to start with, but I bought this two, another 212 to, uh, for this build. And well, I've got all the parts for it anyway, so I'm gonna stick with it. Anyway, this video, I basically wanna look at the parts uh, that I have, the choices I made for the parts. Um, I'll give everybody an opportunity to leave their comments in the description uh, about uh, parts that maybe I should use rather than what I have. Um, I've got a few parts I wasn't expecting and uh, I've got some good ideas. I wrote some good ideas. And uh, well, let's take a look at Mighty. So as I've said, this is a, a Predator 212. Uh, it's brand new. I've had it up on the shelf like maybe two years, you know, just waiting for this day to come. And so many things have gotten in the way. Um, it's been up there a long time. It's really dirty and dusty, the whole box. I mean, it's been in the garage for a long time. So let's get it open. There's so many of these Predator unboxing and build videos out there that I, uh, I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel here. Um, I probably won't explain or show as much as I've done in the past. I really just wanna get this engine done, but I do want to uh, show the parts kind of in detail more than explaining what I'm doing. So, you know, there were other choices out there for this build. I could have went with a, another 224 or even uh, some of the Tillerson engines. You know, I'm kind of limited to what I have here in Southern California. They don't offer us everything because of the EPA. And uh, which really kind of sucks because, you know, we should have the right to build really cool engines too. But it just means that we got to be more creative. Why is things stuck in there? That thing was like stuck in that box. It's been there so long. Now, I've never ran this engine. I'm sure it was run once from the factory, but it is a beautiful new engine. <laughs> and what are we gonna do to it? Take it apart. <laughs> That's all right though. That's what they're for, right? So we're starting with the bone stock, brand new Predator 212. And uh, yeah, we don't need any of this where we're going because honestly, we're taking everything off. And uh, <laughs> none of this will really apply. Uh, there's a few things in there that we can still keep around, you know, for the engine, but honestly, we don't need any of this. Now I will be getting rid of everything you see pretty much. The tank, the air filter, the carburetor, the exhaust. You know, the usual goodies that we take off and everybody has floating around randomly. And this thing is, what can I say, brand new. 
So, uh... Pulls over nice. Actually feels like, like it wants to start. You know, that's good. It would have sucked if it would have been locked up after all this time. Because there's absolutely no warranty on it. That's okay. We don't need it anyway. So, yeah. Here's a look at the engine. Now let's take a look at some of those parts. That's where the fun stuff begins. That's where it really gets interesting. All right. Let me get the parts. Now, in usual DIY Willie fashion, when I'm talking about my new parts for my engine builds, I've got them all in a container. And uh, I think I have two containers for this engine. Or maybe just one. I don't remember. I, I got some stuff scattered around. But we got some good things going on in here. Well, this is for the juggernaut. This is the uh, stage one kit. We'll be doing that later on once the engine's all assembled. And we've got uh, some gaskets. Oh, there we go. Some gaskets that we're going to need. I believe this is a, a 10,000 head gasket. I think we can use that. We may have to go to a thicker gasket because this, this is uh, a shaved head. I don't exactly remember how much it's shaved, but we'll get to that here in a few minutes. So we've got the 6058 uh, billet side cover for the 212 non hemi version and uh, And if you ever get a look at these things, they're just beautiful Here's some push rods some uh, 5.260 inch push rods. I'm not sure if that's was for this build It may be I'll have to double check um, Some stickers hey, thanks go power sports And I've, I've had all this stuff forever, you know, there's the plugs for the the oil fill plugs for the billet side cover. We got the gaskets and some hardware. And of course, these beautiful pieces of art cut from a solid piece of billet aluminum. I mean, look at that. This thing's been on the shelf for a while, but it still looks great. I, I love how they look. You know, I tried to use one of these in my uh, 224 build. It didn't fit because the fill plug on the top got in the way of the electric start. And I really wanted that engine to be electric start. But we don't have that problem with this engine because it is not going to be an electric start. It is a regular pool start. There's another gasket in there. You know, some things we may or may not use. Get this all put away. This is their fillet valve cover. And this knife ain't the sharpest. Anyway, I've had this forever too, man. All these parts are so old. <laughs> and it's taped up, guys. Come on, really? You know, we try to make videos of this stuff. We don't need it so taped up. Anyway, got their billet valve cover. It's a really nice piece. It's got the vent holes on the top for the uh, block breather. And, and these holes are also in the position they're at help put uh, some of the oil vapor from the block through here to help lubricate the valves. Uh, at least that's what they say. So nice new valve cover going on. And there's some hardware for it right there. Oh, and it comes with the barbs too. It comes with the barbs and the hardware. Now I have, I believe, a uh, stud kit for this. So I probably won't use their hardware. And I do have uh, I do have uh, hoses and barbs also. Now this one, this is the head stud kit, but we have something better. And uh, we'll get to look at those later, so we probably won't use this one. We got something better. But we do have the valve cover studs, and uh, I believe we will be using these instead of those other, uh, the other kit that the, other, uh, that the valve cover came with. Now this is a uh, billet lifters to go in place of the ones that are in there. And I know those are brand new and probably perfect, but we got some new billet ones. Maybe these are a little stronger for the lift duration of the cam, the pressures. And of course we got 
the uh, stainless valves to go in the head. Now I believe this kit comes with uh, 26 pound valve springs, I want to say. And, uh, well, we're probably not going to use these because I have something else coming but it hasn't got here yet. And then it's got the automotive style the automotive style peepers for the valve springs. You know? So, uh, and this is the right kit also for the 5.5 valves, I believe. I think they're 27, 25, if I remember correctly. If I'm wrong, please, you can tell me in, in the comments. It also looks like it comes with some shims for the valves. And I don't remember my other kit coming with shims, but hey, that's a pretty good idea. So, there's a look at the valve train and the valves that are coming. Nice valves. These are going to get lapped in to the head when we do the head work. And as I said, I really want to kind of do this, this build as fast as I can. I don't want it to linger on into three or four parts. Um, I am limited on time, however, and sometimes the builds just turn out that way. You know? Anyway, this is the 6256. It's a, uh, Billet rod for the he uh, for the Harbor Freight Predator engine, non Hemi version and Hemi version, I guess. Three point three two eight plus twenty thousandths. So it should bring the piston uh, closer to deck height, I believe. I believe that's what my hope is anyway. And uh, a little story behind these rods: when I built that engine the first time, I bought the wrong rod, and the rod was for a clone engine. And I guess the heart, the 212 and the clone engines are a separate engine. And when I bought the rod, I was thinking, well, it's a, it's a clone of a, of a Honda. So well, it'll work. Well, it doesn't. The journal size, the journal size here, the bearing anyway, is different. And I had hours upon hours upon hours of machining that bearing down with sandpaper to get it to fit on the crank. Uh, it just didn't fit. It wouldn't turn. If you've seen those videos, I'll leave a link to the description in it. If you've seen those videos, uh, <laughs> I built that engine really fast. My son was going to take it to uh, Glamis the next day and uh, he wanted to take the mini bike. But my engine was in pieces, so I had to do it quick. Anyway, that was a look at the rod. Like I said, it's plus 20 thousandths, so it should be my deck height up. Now, da -da -boom. there we go. This is a. Uh, Honda head. It's off of um, not a 196. What's that? GX 160, I believe. Anyway, it's got a smaller combustion chamber, uh, 14 cc's. This is the larger valve. This is the 27 and 25 valve head. However, not like some of them come with smaller valves. This is the larger valve head. I would have liked to have had the bigger. I think uh, 38 or 32, 28 would have been nice. But I mean, this this is going to improve a lot. It could, a lot. It'll raise the compression of the engine up, being the smaller combustion chamber and and uh, the heck was that? Anyway, this needs to be fully assembled. Got to put the seals in. Um, I'm going to port it out inside. Uh, they're pretty small ports. I'm going to go ahead and just smooth them out, round them out. Um, not really enlarge them at all. Uh, just make things work a little smoother. I don't have the equipment to to test them, you know, like some people have. But I've got some ideas. I've watched some videos uh, from porting and polishing these things, and uh, I kind of got a good idea of what I want to do. So we'll definitely get into that. And that might be its own video all on its own. I don't know. Uh, here's a pack of 22 pound springs. Um, like I said, uh, the other one had 26 pound springs and I believe uh, we're gonna go with 32 pound springs these 22 I bought here were for the cam choice I have uh, uh, I think I'm changing that this this piece here I may not end up using after all because I've got that new valve cover when I bought this I was gonna use the original valve cover I wasn't gonna use one like that that was a lot taller and it already has the uh, two holes for the uh, bar fittings to go in from the block. But I bought this kit to 
pretty much do what that was gonna what that is gonna do and it came with the hoses came with a barb um, it's a nice billet piece again you know like this I don't want to take it all apart but this was gonna space it up give it more room for the uh, uh, for the valves and also give me the two ports I needed for the vent breather so we may not use this this came from a uh, small block billet head I guess uh, it was pricey too but like I said I may not use that because that valve cover has the two ports in it already and it may just be, be perfect and I, I won't need that part who knows um, maybe I decide to have more ports on it uh, I really don't know but we have this and it'll be here just in case stubborn packaging now you saw in a previous video if you watched it um, my mega motor mini bike mighty had a CDI ignition on it and I installed that ignition again I believe it was last year and I really couldn't get it to work well uh, when it when it did work oh man it ran beautiful but when it didn't work, man, it was it was a nightmare to start, and uh, it was actually scary to start because it would also you would have to almost whiskey throttle it to get it to start, and then it wanted to take off when it did start. So it was a really hassle. It was a real hassle to uh, to to start. So I took that CDI kit off. I may revisit it later. I don't know. Um, I might try to see if it'll fit my Briggs. That might be interesting. But beside the point. And I put it on a stock coil on the engine and the engine ran flawlessly it ran beautiful uh, then i found my paul's cart carts hot coil and uh, i was able to, to change out the stock coil for the hot coil and man it runs even that much better uh, starts nearly every every two pulls really and uh, it runs great so i picked up another one of paul's carts coil hot coil for this build now this one doesn't have the ground wire on it that his kits normally have. Like the other coil came with a ground uh, ground wire, but uh, I could have bought one again with the ground wire, but I just opted not to this time. I'll make my own ground wire like I did. And I still have the ground wire that came with it on the 224. But these are really nice coils, really good build, you know, nice, uh, I think it's an eight millimeter wire, MSD hood or cap on it, you know, so it's, uh, very nice coils I really like them and uh, it's gonna do really well in this engine I trying to pick the best parts I can for this engine I want it to be dependable I don't race I really just ride around my neighborhood and and have a good time riding it you know like I said sometimes uh, the kids will take it out to the desert or out to the trails but honestly most of the time it sits in the garage and I, I ride it around the neighborhood and terrorize the neighborhood so anyway uh, Paul's cards, man, came in clutch with that, and uh, looking forward to to using that part on this engine. So Paul's cards got in, got in uh, touch with me, and they offered a few other parts. Sent me some fuel hose for this engine. Uh, this is a uh, clamp for the breather I have. They uh, sent me this. <laughs> I'm happy about this. This is something I've I could never imagine building with. Um, for one, I think the only thing that probably costs as much as this, actually nothing. I think this is the most expensive part. I was thinking maybe the billet side cover or the uh, the billet flywheel, but this is probably the, the uh, same as both of those parts. Uh, yeah, this is, this is nice right here. Uh, he sent a jet, a jet packet with it so that I can get it dialed in. And it's got a uh, billet, like an, uh, I think it's a billet piece, uh, fuel cutoff valve. Really nice. And he sent me the, uh, the, the uh, I guess it's a hose that uh, bolts to the manifold and to the carburetor. We've got a new gasket here from Paul's Carts. And we've got. I believe I'm not sure I haven't checked it for sure but I believe these are are uh, stainless steel head studs I believe they are and man that is nice I, I that's way better than the stuff I have I'm sure 
I look forward to putting these in. You know, look at that. Those are beautiful, man. It's hard to believe you can get so excited over simple parts like these. Not heavy too. Super nice. Super, super nice. But look at this. Wow. Look at that, man. What the hell am I going to do with that? That is one beautiful carburetor. That's even better looking than the Nibby. Man. I don't know, man. I just don't know. I hope my engine build is worthy of this. Really, I do. Oh, I've never used anything like this before, you know? It's it's an incredible piece, man. Nice looking carburetor. I'm excited to try it. Now, my history of tuning these things hasn't been that great. But Paul sent along uh, some pretty good written instructions on how to tune it. You know, because every, every engine is going to be a little different. Um, not everything is built the same. Um, he also came through with a bunch, man. Thanks, Paul. A bunch. I mean, a bunch of pretty cool stickers, man. Look at this. This guy, man. There we go. Look at that. He sent me some nice stuff. And I'm looking forward to getting in there and building this engine and trying this carb. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah this is great man I've never used anything like this but oh, I'm, I'm excited I'm really excited you know I've, I've never had somebody offer up great parts like this and say hey don't buy a carburetor I'm gonna send you one to try out tell me how you like it and yeah I uh, think I'm really gonna like it <laughs> look at that thing man Wow. Coo -coo. <laughs> oh, Bob. oh man. I'm excited to do that thing. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say, man. I, I, I appreciate that guy. You know, I, I've been using his parts for a while and uh, keeping an eye on some of the billet stuff he has. Like he's got some really cool pull handles I like. And uh, you know, I might grab one of those. But my other engine would yank out of my hand sometimes if I didn't get the compression right. And uh, it would hurt. So I didn't really want to go to a billet handle. But maybe this engine, if I get the timing right, and I get the, uh, you know, get it off the compression when you're starting it, it might work better. You know, maybe, maybe then I could get one of those nice fancy pulls. So down here in this other bag, again from Paul's Carts, uh, we've got the intake manifold for that carburetor and this one has the fittings are uh, the inlet for the pulse fitting and it comes with a barb inside so this will hold uh, the carburetor with that little hose clamp bushing or hose clamp I'm, I'm not even sure what it's called but uh it's what mounts the carburetor to this and another one of his shutoff valves. I've got the two bikes. I'll make use of both valves. So that's the intake side of it. That covers the intake, the head, all that good stuff. One more part, or a couple, actually a couple more parts. We have a Dynocam CM. It's a... Uh, a DC CLCM Predator. There's the numbers right there. Now, according to the cam chart or the cam sheet on this thing, this has look at that, nice, heavy. According to the cam sheet, right here. This has a lift of 265 on the intake and exhaust. So it's a super stock class cam. It recommends 32 degrees timing. And the billet flywheel. Did we look at the billet flywheel? Where's the billet flywheel? I have a billet flywheel. 
Uh, anyway, it recommends 32 degrees timing for this cam. And the billet flywheels, they come with the 32 degrees built in the, into them already. Um, now, I have coming in the mail uh, since Paul sent me that carburetor. I really wanted to make use of that carburetor, the extra uh, size of it. And I think, even though my head's the stock valve size, I think the, uh, the larger cam will make use of that carb more. So I ordered a 308 cam, uh, and this is a 265. So the 308 claims to be easy on the valve train, but it requires a 34 degrees timing. So I've got the cam coming, and I've got a, a two degree timing key, so I can adjust the timing to get the 34 degrees. Also, that cam recommends uh, um, 32 pound valve springs. So uh, I have those coming as well. Unfortunately, I had to get them in different places, so they probably come at different times because the one place I bought the cam from, I believe was OMB Warehouse, uh, they were out of, out of uh, the 32 pound springs. So this one, I believe this cam, it recommends uh, 22 pound springs or 18, something like that. And while well, I got that covered, if I decide to go that way, I've got that. But I think I'm going to go with the 308 cam and the 32 pound springs. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's going to make the engine run a little harder, run a little rougher and bolt. You know, like the old days, bloop, 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 I think. And that bigger carburetor is, is really going to make use of that longer duration of uh, those valves being open. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, please somebody put in a comment before I build it. Maybe I'll use this one instead of the 308, but I think the 308 will be a better choice. Uh, anyway. Um, oh, I have some more about uh, head gaskets in here. And of course, Dino Cans always sent you some stickers with their cam kits. So, where is that, that bullet? side cover oh no it's the billet flywheel I'm missing I wonder where that sucker is I thought I had everything in one box I've got one now we'll find it uh, in fact I'm gonna go look for it right this second I found it it was hidden in the garage up on the shelf but I found it There's a throttle cable in there. We don't need that. But this is the 6625 ARC billet flywheel. And uh, man, these billet parts are just beautiful. You know, they are just beautiful pieces of work. Amazing. I mean, this thing's tarnished a little bit. I've had it in the box for a while. Look at that. I mean, these are just crazy beautiful. Now, this has the rare earth magnets in it. A lot stronger magnets that come with, come with the stock flywheel. So uh, that means that you don't have to have uh, that, that exact gap. You know, you can spread the gap out a little bit. You can get a hotter spark, much stronger spark from the uh, flywheel. Now, this flywheel does say what I was saying, that it's set to 32 degrees uh, timing. And I've got that timing key that will advance it two more degrees, making it 34 degrees. And uh, uh, with a minimum coil gap of 30 thousandths, but I think we'll go like 40. Or actually, Paul's Carts Coil uh, Hot Coil recommends 65 degrees because of the uh, quality of the coil. And I guess it's the extra windings in it. He recommends 65 thousandths. So this says 30 thousandths. I've got Mighty's coil right now set to, uh, it's about 60 thousandths and it runs great. So I think we're heading in the right direction with these parts and uh, it should be another fantastic engine build. Like I said, you know, this has all been done before. I'm not doing anything new, but I am doing it wheelie style and I'm excited to have these parts and, uh, 
a lot of my my uh, friends there on YouTube have built these engines, and they build them airplane. They build them really well. Uh, you know, th this is probably uh, it'll be like the fourth engine I've built, and I've got some really good parts. I've learned a lot along the way watching other people's uh, videos. I link them all in the description. Uh, the people that I like to watch, and um, yeah, I'm excited to get going. Um, I do have one more billet part here. However, this is not for this engine. This is for Biggs the Briggs. And uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to handle this. But I ordered up Biggs, a 94SS uh, Dino Cam's uh, modified cam. And this thing is beautiful. It is it's very beautiful for Biggs the Briggs. I know it's not part of this build, but I just wanted to show it. And I'll show it again when I do Biggs' build, but that build will be later on down the road once I finish uh, this build for Mighty. But look at this thing. Look at that. That is beautiful. I have never had a cam that looks this nice. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> smells like engine oil or gear oil. Very nice product. Now that had to be specially made because they don't stock those stuff that stuff around anymore. These 94 SS cams. Uh, they either wanted my cam in return, which I couldn't do because it's still in bigs, or they wanted a brand new one like this made of billet. And after I ordered it, they notified me and said they didn't have many billet blanks that it would take a while for them to come. And well, what can I do, right? More stickers. Now this. Uh, this cam, it's got a lift of 262 for that uh, that Briggs. Um, I believe the timing is also 30 to 32 degrees, which I have a billet flywheel, and I think the billet flywheel for the Briggs is also 32 degrees. And uh, I've got new valves that I'm gonna uh, lap in, and I've got new springs, and I've got new lifters for that engine too. So uh, Biggs is gonna be running pretty strong when we're done with that build, but again, you know, that has nothing to do with any of this. I'm sorry, I got a little sidetracked. But I just wanted to share that. It's such a beautiful piece. The oil is making my skin itch. That's like gear oil, I believe. But, um, but yeah, you've seen the parts. Uh, you know what's coming. Yeah, look forward to this build. I think in the, uh, in the next one, the next video, we're going to go ahead and get the engine broke down and uh, start getting it cleaned up for all these wonderful, beautiful parts to go in it. Now, uh, I've, I'm kind of tossing around the idea of painting the block. Uh, I know there's a uh, Cerakote out there, but like a powder coat. Man, that's big money. I, I really can't afford that right now. But I'm thinking about painting it, uh, the engine block. And of course, the cooling tins and stuff like that are going to get a nice color on them too. I haven't quite decided. I've got a couple ideas what I want. Uh, but I kind of want to stick with the colors on the bike, which usually for me is uh, black and red. But it might, I might switch it up. I might go something maybe exotic, you know, like a green or an orange or uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But in the meantime, all these parts, it's going to be a fantastic build. I hope everybody sticks it out. Uh, oh, I forgot one more thing. I almost forgot. Super Clean signed up for this build. They sent me a few of the uh, cleaning products to uh, help with it. I've got some degreaser and uh, some more spray-on degreaser, aerosol degreaser. This is a all-wheel cleaner. I'm definitely going to use this for my other wheels. But uh, yeah, they offered up a few products, and uh, we're going to give them a shot, use them up, and definitely get this uh, engine super clean, as it says, and. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that they sent this stuff out to me and look forward to, to working with them longer uh, in the future, hopefully. Uh, man, I love this stuff like this, you know. This will uh, uh, make the build quality a lot better. Um, yeah, this is just going to make for a really great build. Now look at that, biodegradable detergents. That's, that's amazing. And it works. All right, so... Uh, uh, we've seen everything and uh, I hope you guys come back for the next installment of this video where we start breaking that thing apart. Well, we're, we're going to get on it this time. There's one more box. I forgot all about this box. 
Here we are talking about cleaners already. I thought we were done with parts, but there's one more here and I forgot about it. This is a 212 flat top piston from NRC Racing. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this again is gonna be one of those uh, those parts that boost compression, get rid of that dish piston, <laughs> get rid of that dished piston. And it comes with new rings never put rings on we're gonna have the first time doing that and we're gonna stick them in the hole and make sure that they're gapped properly but it's a beautiful piece too you know all this going into this engine man i hope it turns out good i hope i don't mess it up <laughs> you've seen all the parts again <laughs> you've seen all the parts we're gonna get it back you get it uh going get this build going and uh it's gonna be a good time so uh, sub subscribe if you haven't already. Give the videos a thumbs up. Check out the videos uh, I have on my previous builds and my mini bikes, my trucks, all of that. And uh, well, I'll always come back to DIY Willie for your small engine needs, uh, whether it be the Briggs or the Honda clones or you know just anything. Ask any questions you like in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them, and uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna really be fun. So. Uh, yeah, again, thanks for stopping by and checking out the videos. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Here it is. This is my next great build. And we've got to talk about all these parts. I'm excited.